Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Wombly's. It's a little bit rainy here in London, which is a surprise. It's, it's not really a surprise. Uh, today I'm going to be solving a problem. I'm in the solving problems business. You can leave your problems in comments. This problem comes from Sam, who writes, I can't help but view love in a pessimistic way. The idea of depending on another person is scary. Help. Sam, I've got good news and bad news and really bad news. Let's start with the really bad news. Uh, uh, no, actually, let's start with the situation. As you can see here, Burnley are in fifth place. We are in seventh. Seventh is just outside the um, the playoffs. So I, I think teams three, four, five, and six go into a four-team playoff, the winner of which will be promoted to the Premier League. So we need to put together a string of results. It's still relatively early in the season. We had a bad, uh, very bad October, but we've had a good November so far. Um, and frankly, Brentford are beatable. Uh, if you look at their players and our players, I think we've got a good chance. Uh, I am starting in midfield. Our central midfield is all Wimbledon Academy products today. Kaja, who had that phenomenal last second goal in Vienna to send us through the knockout round of the Euro League. Um, I felt like I had to start him today. I have to give him a run of the, run in the f in the team and see if he can uh, continue that good work. And I'm also starting Alfie Egan, the ginger Messi, the 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 redheaded R Ronaldo. Uh, he's going to be starting as well in central midfield, and we'll see how that works. It may not work because they're still young players and they don't have like the certainly don't have the skill level of an Oreo Baskets or. Um, even of a Dean Parrot, but w w w let's wait and see, okay? Let's not, let's not judge too harshly or too soon. Sam, let's talk about love that you can't help but view in a pessimistic way. Sam, everything's going to end. Uh, everything. Uh, the universe itself is going to end. Earth is going to end. The sun uh, will cease to be a star. The, the, it's, all, it's, it's, it's all temporary. We're only here for a little while. You're only here for a little while. None of this, none of this should make you feel pessimistic, though, um, because the fact that nothing is like going to be forever does not in any way affect, affect the fact that right now everything matters. Like everything that you're doing, everyone that you care about, every, every, you know, every impact that you're making in the world every decision you make, it all matters. It all matters a lot. And in a way, it matters more because it's temporary. I realize this isn't directly speaking to your question yet, but I just want to establish that at the outset. Like, th th there is no, like, um, there is no, you know, earthly forever anyway. And lots of people take that as, like, some kind of, like, terrible news that means that, like, life is not worth... Oh, God, that should have been, but it wasn't. <gasps> Husband to hus Oh, it should have been again. We should have had two goals by now. It's John Green on the ball. It's John Green on the ball. He's passing to his... Shut the front flipping door. Meredith, guess who just scored a goal? Actually, I can't tell. Oh, it was other John Green. I thought it was Kaja again. He's... Shh. That's right. Everybody be quiet. Because John Green's in the house. Ball John Green passed to other John Green, and we're up 1-0. Ball John Green. Other John Green. Just inside the box, magnificent finish. And we're up 1-0, just like that. Boom clap. I recently went to a Charlie XCX concert, and it was totally surreal to hear Charlie XCX sing that song in front of, like, 60,000 people. Because, like, I remember that song. I remember hearing that song for the first time. Uh, because it was on the Fault in Our Stars soundtrack, like, when I was watching the movie Alone with Sarah six months before it came out. So, so weird. I mean, just... Anyway, not relevant to your concern, Sam. You are already dependent upon people. There is no, like, magical way to live life with no dependence on others. Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess there is. I guess there are people out there, Sam, who do not interact with other humans. But I think what makes um, humans interesting as a species and what separates us really from other, at least other, other uh, animals similar, relatively similar to us, is precisely that we are so unalone. We are so deeply cooperative, right? I mean, chimpanzees are incredibly smart, but if you give chimpanzees a, a log that is too big for one of them to carry, 
they will never figure out that six of them together could carry it. We are endlessly... I'm not actually... I don't know if that actual example is true, but it, we are like lots of people think that people I've, I have, well, let me, let me rephrase all of this. I, I have at least read that what distinguishes us is cooperation. That might be wrong. I don't know, but that's what I've, that, that's what I've read. Um, like I, I, I've read, I've read uh, social scientists who say that we shouldn't be called homo sapiens so much as we should be called like homo cooperatists or whatever. I think that we are so dependent upon each other already, and not just on the people we know and love and who are close to us, but we're so dependent upon strangers. We're so dependent upon, you know, people holding up their end of social contracts, not driving when they're drunk. We're so dependent upon people, you know, being being careful and cautious, uh, careful and cautious, careful and cautious um, of themselves and of each other. And we're so we we need other people all the time to be available to us to help us when we're in need to um, offer us like, um, you know, the security and, and to be part of this like huge global community of humans that are trying to to most of the time trying to do right by each other and 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 uh and themselves and everything we're so dependent upon all that stuff how did i not score a goal like how did i not score a goal i was three inches away from the goal and i shot the ball and somehow the goalie saved it anyway so you're you're worried about being dependent upon people and then i score that one You're worried about being dependent upon people, but like you're you're already super dependent upon people. There's no Oh, he's is he stirring the pot? I believe he's stirring the pot. So so there, there's some drama. I don't know what it is yet. I'll have to ask him after the game. There is no way not to be dependent upon people. Now, I think what you're really concerned about is being dependent upon one person, feeling like you are like your whole well-being is dependent upon another person's feelings about you and upon upon their well-being. And I remember being really worried about that when I was young and even like when I was in serious relationships in my like teens and 20s feeling like, oh my God, like I am so, and in, in many cases I was too dependent upon the person in a way that wasn't healthy and that like wasn't good for, um, wasn't good for our relationship and wasn't good for me. Um, because no one person can meet all of your needs. Like, no one person can be everything to you. You often hear that, like, in romantic movies or whatever. Somebody will say, like, you're my everything. That always makes me nervous. I don't, I don't think that anybody can be your everything. It's too much to live up to. It's too much to have to hold all of somebody's problems. And I think that's one of the things that I did really poorly in my early romantic relationships was not understanding that. Um... And having unreasonable expectations for the people I loved and also, um, you know, at at times them having unrealistic expectations for me. So I I don't I think you're right to be concerned about that in the sense that, like, yeah, no one person is ever going to be able to, like, solve all your problems uh, except for me playing FIFA. That's the only exception to that rule. Uh, But nobody. But that doesn't mean that, like, love means nothing or love is dead or whatever. I just don't... I've been fouled in the box and it's not been called again. I just don't buy that at all. I don't... uh, I think that, uh, yeah, you are... In your life, you're going to be deeply dependent upon people. I mean, what a goal. Just, Just incredible. And he did the rugby celebration. This is ridiculous. We have been on an absolute tear the last three games, just ripping apart our opponents. I don't know what's different. I checked the skill level. I must just be good again. Anyway. You shouldn't be pessimistic about love because it's going to end, and you shouldn't be pessimistic about love because it means that you're going to be dependent upon someone because you're already dependent upon someone, and everything is already going to end. Um... I I think the way to think about it is that, yeah, like loving people means risks, risking getting hurt. Uh, I think that like the old uh, the old adage that like it's better to have loved and lost than not to have loved at all is a little bit wrongly imagined because I don't think that there is an option not to have loved at all. Like, I don't think that that uh, I don't think that that alternative exists. Like maybe. You, you know, like you, you choose whether to have romantic love in your life, um, but I don't think you choose whether to have love in your life. Uh, I think that all all humans are loved, even uh, if they don't necessarily feel feel that love all the time, and and often feel 
even you know deeply deeply abandoned and and deeply alone i still think that uh, all all humans are are loved and that that that's i kind of the foundational belief of my life actually so let's see if we can score here we can't so i think you are going to depend upon another person you know i i'm deeply dependent upon my spouse but that isn't scary i know that it would be absolutely devastating to me if sarah died like it would be it you know it would be devastation on a level that i can't imagine and i, I hope that i never have to uh but that does not invalidate or even or or delegitimize or call into question or anything the our love like it, it it's always going to be the case like you're never the idea that somehow you're going to find a way to be like safe from the risk of loss is ludicrous because like everything that we love is going to die and so and, and, and there's no there's no way out of that pickle i i i, I think that if we act like therefore i should try to limit my loves or try to limit the way that I interact with the, you know, interact with people because then I won't have to mourn them when they die or I won't have to feel grief when they leave. I, I think that ends up like taking away a lot of what makes human life really valuable. Uh, and all you get for it is that you don't have to experience one kind of loss, but you'll still have to experience plenty of other kinds. So I don't think there's a magical way out of um, uh, John Green is way off sides. Just don't even get involved in the play. Ah, why'd you get involved in the play? Anyway, I don't think you're going to find like a, I don't think you're going to find a way to like live in independently and not ever have to deal with grief or loss or not ever have to deal with interpersonal problems or deal with the fact that people you might love might uh, you know that those those relationships might end or that love might end or whatever it, it you're never there's just it's just not going to happen at least I don't think so uh, at, at least it couldn't for me in the end it wasn't a choice between uh, for me it wasn't a choice between loving and not loving or between dependence or not dependence it was a choice between ex, you know finding a healthy kind of love and not uh, that was the choice for me. And I think that you can have a really healthy, deep love for someone, whether it's romantic or not, and still also know that it could end because everything could end. Like nothing, nothing is guaranteed to us at any, at any moment. And yeah, it's all super fragile and it's hard not to feel that fragility all the time. Feel like you know, it's hard not to think. Well, lots of people think that it's a bad. Like, like lots of people think that uh, it's bad to ignore the fragility of life, and that we should always be like hyper aware of it and everything. I don't buy that at all. Like, I think it's fine to ignore the fragility of life. This is a great run. It just didn't result in a goal, but that was a really good run. I really like that from Barcham. That was the kind of thing that I need to see more of if he wants to start ahead of Ben Woodburn. I think it's okay to ignore the fragility of everything, but I don't think it's okay to forget it. Like, I think we have to be mindful of it, but at the same time, not obsessed with it. Anyway, Sam, I think love's worth it. And also, I don't think we have a choice. Thanks for watching. Best wishes.